I have a couple of stories to share with all of you today. And these stories relate to how do you really use the exponential technologies we talk about so much nowadays, AI, IoT, blockchain, digital. Can we really use this technology to accelerate social transformations? Can we use them to build a much more inclusive world? Can we address some of the hard problems faced by humans, whether it is poverty, whether it is access to education, finance, healthcare, climate? And that's the kind of questions we ask ourselves every day in the lab. And I would like to share with you a couple of things why I feel these technologies are an excellent tool for us to solve the societal problems. And my other observations I would like to sh share regarding solving for the society. We all know that solving societal problems is not easy. For one, they are wicked problems. And what I mean by that is there's no one reason why a problem occurs. For example, you cannot say that the reason for poverty is lack of education. That may be one of the cause, but there may be many other causes. And these causes, they feed into each other. So if you have to tackle these kind of problems or manage these kind of problems, you need technology which allows you to model it, to take a probabilistic approach rather than a deterministic approach. And this is where technologies like artificial intelligence is very handy. To illustrate this with an example, we did a work in 24 Paganas in West Bengal with Child in Need Institute. Before we did this work, the community workers would be in the villages with their paper and pencil trying to track girl child who are uh, likely uh, who are vulnerable for early school dropouts or marriages or even human trafficking. And then when they collaborated with us, what we really did is we created with their help a model with 42 parameters around health, nutrition, safety, education. And then we used this model to train them with real data. And then what Child in Need Institute really had was a probability that a girl child can be human trafficked. And that's the vulnerability index. In the first year alone, they could save 200 girls. So this is how these technologies are so powerful. Another story that I want to narrate is regarding Akshay Patra. Akshay Patra, many of us know, they feed 1.6 million children every day in schools because their vision is no child should be deprived of education because of hunger. Because of the scale, and they are highly automated, by the way, the kitchens, the mega kitchens are highly automated, but because of the scale, even if you can reduce the cost of a meal by one passe, they can generate millions or more meals for children. And that was the challenge for us in the lab. And we brought the combinatorial power of AI, blockchain, and IoT to use. With help of AI, we helped Akshay Patra forecast the next day's meals that they have to prepare so that there's no wastage. With help of IoT, we created sensors in India with some of the startups here, and we put them into the large quadrons. And the, the kitchen staff, for the first time, could see real time was the temperature inside those large quadrons. When do they have to put their masalas and the ingredients? And we augmented the kitchen workers, and rather than using AI to automate them out. And what it really meant was, there was a huge energy saving because they were not overcooking anymore. And the quality was also much more consistent. The other very interesting thing we did, for example, is use blockchain. So societal problems tend to have multiple stakeholders. And at times, there's a lack of trust. With blockchain, since nobody owns the blockchain, you can put proof of work in the blockchain. So we use this blockchain in Akshay Patra's supply chain to ensure that food is being delivered timely and food is of the right quality. So the schools, they enter their 
feedback inside, Akshay Patra does it, and at the end of the day, they have better reporting and better auditing as well. So using this combinatorial power, we demonstrated that they could increase the efficiency by as much as 20%, which really translates into millions of more meals. So that's the power of these technologies. Um, finally, I wanted to say that while technology is a necessary condition, it's not a sufficient condition. When you do a tech for good project, it's an ecosystem play. You need governments with the right regulations so that you can use these technologies, say it's drone or bitcoins or whatever, so that you can start using this technology. The other thing is you have to, for example, collaborate with the civil society because you can't just throw these solutions to the bottom of the pyramid. There's no capacity to absorb these innovations. And finally, you have to co-create. The society is the lab for creating tech for good solution. With that, thank you so much.